Hi, I'm Donovan. And I'm Kelly. And, and we, we are, are Craving Cinematics. Cinematics. Well, I couldn't believe it when Kelly called me and said, We've got access to Blue Planet 2. I said, Really? He said, Yes. We've yes. actually had someone help us to get access to this content. <laughs> And we are so thankful. We're not going to mention you by name, but we are so thankful. But you thankful. know who you are, and you we know love who you. you. Are. Yes, we love thank you. you so much. <laughs> and we got to see episode one, the oh Antarctic, last night. Oh my goodness! Never in my life have I seen a spectacle. It it was like absolutely this. gorgeous. Now, the thing that really got me about the whole thing, just starting off with the video was we talk about cinematography all of the time but Boy. holy moly this how was a smorgasbord of cinematography how, <laughs> i i've got to give kudos to the film crews oh, and stuff gosh, yes oh, the gosh. shots in this was absolutely amazing and the sheer amount of patience and time to get some of the shots that they got yeah it, it, and the cold well this is in the antarctic the first one yeah Oh, you woo, you know it had to be cold. That yeah. was some cold. Well, it was the work. coldest it's the coldest water on earth. Right. But also I, oh, go ahead. But also the danger that yes. these people yes. put themselves the risk that they had to take. Right. Because we're talking a thousand meters underwater, the amount of pressure alone, not to mention the temperatures right. and the lack of light and everything, it was just unbelievable what these people were able to accomplish oh so kudos to the film crew kudos well it's it's the entire crew uh it's the film crew you have well, the, well true, true you have the crew of the ship true you have the crew the pilots of the submarines so that's true so all of these people worked as a team together to really bring us a view of earth that no one no one has seen in such a complete uh, picture. This is what blew me away. There was a comment at the very beginning that they said, we know more about the surface of Mars, Mars. than we know about the depths of our, o our own ocean. oceans. I know. I and said, it's what? <laughs> it's, it is. Why? It's, it's amazing. Well, <laughs> for one thing, the risks involved. For instance, even sending a probe to the depths of the Marianas Trench is so difficult simply because of the pressures and the time it takes to yeah. get there. Because we're talking six miles underwater in some areas. The amount of pressure that's there would crush solid blocks of solid steel. Yeah. It's so thick. It's, it would be the equivalent of sending a probe to the depths of the gas giant Jupiter. It's so harsh there that, you know, it's near impossible. Going to Mars, they're traveling across space and then landing on the surface is nowhere as difficult as it is to get to that depth in the ocean. But what they brought back... Oh my gosh. The, the, the... Everything from the squid to these really unique fish. Uh, well, aliens, they all, talking about space, they all look like freaking aliens. <laughs> it's, it's, that one fish that had the, the clear head. The transparent head. Transparent, the transparent head. Skull. Yeah. So his eyes could actually look up through his skull and see predators and stuff trying to eat him. But you could see its brain <laughs> and you could see its eyeballs. It's Straight out of science fiction, it was amazing. But it was cute too. It actually had almost like a human looking face. Yeah. But it was a fish. Never seen before. How about the fish that had fins that acted like feet? Walking yeah. on the bottom. He had feet, guys. <laughs> and sorry, I'm getting a little sick. I'm starting oh. to catch a cold. So I may lose my voice. But this little fish was walking on the floor of the ocean. And then you've got the fish that look like real silver. Oh yes! Just and they swim and they upright. Ting, they they they're, they're well. Sound. I think that was the soundtrack because the sound didn't at that depth doesn't really true. Because it, it, even if it did, it'd be a very bassy tone, it'd be very long wavelengths. So I think that was just the soundtrack that they put in. Oh there. okay, never mind then. Let's get that. <laughs> okay, but, but 
But what, what something Jonathan mentioned, mm -hmm. and and I had to sit and go. Hmm. He said, "We're down a thousand meters down. It's pitch black. There is no light. There's nothing." And yet, when the camera hit these fish, they were so colorful. It looked like Mardi Gras at the bottom of the Antarctic Ocean. It, it, it didn't yeah. it? it? And he said, you know, what is the purpose of them being so colorful? You know, why isn't everything just kind of blah and, 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 and Trans, trans, translucent, translucent or, or uh, just uh, a silverish or a gray yeah. color? Yeah, it, that has... So much color. I know. It, it, because color in nature usually is used as a basis to attract a mate in many cases. And they can't see. It, How do they find mates? Did, was that a dress? What? Was it? Uh, well, it's dark. How do they find food? How do they find friends? How do they find... Well... Whoopi. Not Goldberg. But... Well, they did, you know... For one thing, they talked about the gill sharks. Remember when the yeah. the carcass fell to the bottom? Yeah. They could go without food for a year. Yes. But they use so little energy that they just kind of cruise along. Can just... you imagine not eating for a year? Yeah. Yeah, I can't either. Anyway, this was fantastic. And to be honest, I was a little kind of heartbroken only because I grew up watching his shows and everything, it's David, David Attenborough. I know the man is way in the years, but you can hear it in his voice, and... But you know what? what? I think they chose him because his voice was very soothing. Well, it's so distinctive. I and mean, as, David is... It, well, yes, David Attenborough is yeah, who we're talking about. He is the biologist. And 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 as you, as the, the subs were cruising along, you know, mm. at this... Nice, and it was, you almost felt like you were on a boat, just kind of rocking back and forth. It was very, very calming. There was, yeah. you know, even the sharks fighting oh. each other and tearing the carcass off of the whale. And David Attenborough's voice, I'm oh, sorry, came on, and it was just very nice and soothing. And this is David Attenborough with the BBC. And this is Planet Two, Blue Planet Two, yeah. and it was just so yeah. I, that's why I watched him growing up. I mean, I mean, he is the man when it comes to this. After watching this, I do want to bring out one thing, and I'm I'm not going to get political or anything. It's just fact. All right, many people all over the world are, you know, on one side or the other of concerning global warming. It's a good debate. It should be debated. It should be, you know, proven one way or the other. I don't get into the debate. The thing that is bothering me, though, about this mm -hmm. is that there are a lot of other types of pollution other than just the, uh, the pollution of the atmosphere. Because mm -hmm. one oh. of the things, and it's not just... Discard, uh, discarding trash or whatever, although that's a big part of it. But there is another part, and it, this episode really brought it out, is how all of these coral were dying out on the bottom because of the overfishing on the surface. Because there wasn't enough material coming down and settling down on the bottom for these coral to be able to eat and, and, and to continue to survive because man has gone up and overfished the surface. So there's not enough fishy poo-poo. <sighs> Organic material so, coming yeah. down. So what is happening is is the pollution, or granted, that's not the proper term for it, but it's the action of man that is causing so much damage to this planet, we don't even realize it. And a lot of the times it's out of sight, out of mind. We talked earlier on the trailer reactions for this about the uh, plastic islands that are forming because so much trash are being thrown into the oceans. Mm. All of the harsh chemicals being thrown out there. The atmosphere, yes, it is causing, there are, we have problems 
because of pollution going into the atmosphere, yeah, but, but we have... Who's causing the pollution problems? Right, but we're also causing pollution problems in the oceans yeah. and in landfills and everything else because we just don't know what to do with these this trash that we've created out of plastics and everything <clears throat> else. But it's also our actions of causing other, you know, the extinction of, of many species, overfishing, causing a, a coral reef on the bottom of the Antarctic Ocean to just die. So, again, be mindful of this. It may be it's out a of much bigger problem than we think. Right. It may be out of sight, out of mind right now. Mm -hmm. But for our future generations, you yeah. know, it's not going to be out of sight, out of mind. No. It's going to be a mega problem. Yep. So we need to take and care of it now. Take care of our future generations. I agree. Basically, you know, take what you need mm -hmm. and leave the rest. And recycle wherever you can. Yes. All right, I'm Donathan. And I'm Kelly. And, and we, we are Craving, craving Cinematics. cinematics.